All right. So Jansen, thank you so much for joining me today. I am not going to try to pronounce your last name, but for the people watching, can you please pronounce your name for us? Yes, for sure. Thank you so much for having me, Tony. My name is Jensen Zhou, uh, kind of like Joe, J-O-E. Yeah, I, I can remember that. That's an easy <laughs> one. Thank so you. Jansen, you are the founder of HippoScribe. HippoScribe is an AI scribe technology used for physical therapy, and I am one of the physical therapists using it. Later, we'll talk about my experience with it, but first, I would love to hear more about your story. I know a little bit from the pre-interview. I know that you came to the U.S. from China. I know you went to school in the U.S., but I want to hear how did you get involved or get interested in artificial intelligence, large language models, kind of take us through coming to the U.S. and then what got you interested in this profession? Yeah, for sure. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I came to the U.S. when I was 17 years old to go to college. I got a CS degree, got a tech job afterwards, and then worked as a software engineer for about uh, six years, I want to say. Um, I, I've always wanted to own my own business, so I decided to quit and do a startup. Uh, I would say I spent maybe a, a quite a few, uh, maybe a year or so, just trying to find an idea that worked. And during my search, OpenAI released ChatGPT, and that completely changed my work view of like, what can you do with AI? So yeah, I would say the the day that OpenAI dropped GPT-4 is the day I seriously become super interested in trying to use AI to um, solve problems that previously cannot be solved before. Um, wow. And with that lesson, my, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so with that lens in mind, uh, I, and during my search, I connected with a physical therapist a lot. Uh, I saw one of the physical therapists because I had the shoulder issues. And during the treatment, I just started asking him questions like, hey, how do you like about your job? What do you not like your job? What do you, what do you hate? Um, so I learned that documentation is a big problem. Um, he told me that this is like his single, the single biggest thing that he hates about a job. Just the fact that like after seeing the patient, he still had to spend so much time on documentation. Uh, so I just kept tucking on this thread, talked to more and more PTs and learned that this is like a universal problem. And at some point it clicked to me that, hey, actually large language model would be extremely good at solving this problem because now uh, we actually have something that can understand what has been said during the session, extract uh, the information you want to document, like the range of motion, the treatment you do, uh, et cetera. So that's why I started working on this problem. I love that. And I know that you said you talked to almost 200 physical therapists before you and I got connected. What were some of the other pain points that you heard during those initial conversations? Yeah, I would say the top pain points probably just the fact that reimbursement has been getting lower every year. Um, the second pain point is probably documentations. Another one is just how long the workday is. A lot of the PT I talked to, they had to see patient back to back in like 10 hours, 12 hour shift. And that's just like quite brutal. Yeah. Yeah. Something that I've said multiple times is I am not the same quality therapist for my 4, 4 p.m. appointment as I am for my 9 a.m. appointment. I'm 49 by the time I hit lunch and then see that afternoon uh, block of patients my brain is not firing on all cylinders. And, and that's really where I think there's a lot of misconception about what an AI scribe would do for therapists in the clinic. I think the marketing message out there right now is AI is going to do the notes for you. I don't think that's a reality. I don't think we're going to see that anytime soon. And I don't think there's a physical therapist watching who wants artificial intelligence to do the note for them. I think what we really want is we want a second pair of ears, a second pair of eyes, and a second brain. So that there are things, and I've noticed this using HippoScribe myself, the ambient listening feature, there are things that the patient will say, and we know humans are not great at multitasking. So when I'm trying to listen, I'm trying to empathize and connect and build a rapport and focus on my patient, and trying to document and trying to remember and trying to synthesize all of the things my patient is telling me, I am going to lose details. 
But when I have the AI assistant listening to the session, then when I go back and I look at the information that came through either in the dictation, transcription, or in the actual finished note, there's always been elements that I realize I completely would have forgotten if I didn't have a second pair of ears. And so it's not doing the note for me. It's doing the note with me. It's supporting me to do a better note. And I think one of the things that you said also is reimbursement is going down. So having that extra layer of technology that helps us provide better doc documentation without more effort, I think those are the real value propositions, not so much just the fact that it's going to do it and replace physical therapists. It's going to do it with us and make us 10 times better. So I've got a question and, and yes. I want to share kind of my thoughts on this first. The name of the company, Hippo Scribe. Mm -hmm. And I've told you some of this, but I want to kind of share it with everybody. When I first heard Hippo Scribe, I thought Hippo, Hippopotamus. I thought of the animal. I'm like, how does the animal fall like connect to an AI scribe technology? And then I took a second. I was like, oh, hit. and I'm going to quote a movie, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. I don't know if you're too young for this. Hippocrates, which is actually Hippocrates. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I think of Hippocrates, I think of the Hippocratic Oath. Of course, the saying everybody's familiar with first comma, do no harm, which actually isn't part of the Hippocratic Oath. It's part of another thing that he said. But I think of that when I think of AI scribe technology, and I'm like, that that's the point here. First, do no harm. This is a new technology. Of course, it's HIPAA compliant. Of course, it abides, abides by all the guidelines and the requirements that any EMR technology or any of the things that we're already using for the last 20 years abides by. But the reality is we want to make sure first we do no harm. We want to make sure that we, we are working with the technology. We're reviewing the documentation. It's saying what we want it to say. It's supporting our clinical decisions. Um, I love the idea now that I look at it as, oh, this is about the Hippocratic Oath and do no harm more than it's about the animal, the hippopotamus, although I do love the hippopotamus. <laughs> Thank you. So um, what are your thoughts on that? Like AI technology that does no harm, but helps improve the patient care experience. Yeah, I, I think you summarize it very, very nicely. Yes, absolutely. I don't think AI should do any harm to the human. Like we build this technology because we, we've heard that therapists are having a lot of pain, having a lot of burnout themselves because of documentations. And while therapists are alleviating pain from the patient, no one is here to, <clears throat> excuse me, no one is here is to alleviate the therapist's pain. So yes, uh, we're definitely a believer of using AI to help, not using AI to do harm, and not, uh, yeah, that's, that's what we're all about. Yeah, so what I love about it too is how easy it is to implement and roll out. You know, it's one of those things where I'm in the process right now of switching EMRs and I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do and where I'm going to go. And it's like a four week rollout to get a new EMR implementation up and running for my physical therapy clinic. But when I signed up for HippoScribe, I literally signed up using my Gmail account. And within minutes of signing up, I was ready to start recording. There was an executed business associates agreement in place. I could start recording a dictation because I didn't have patients around and I could see how the AI scribe took the words that I said and organized it within a template that was already created. But I also know you've been doing a lot of upgrades to the system lately. So I would love to hear one or two of the upgrades you made. One of them is obviously customized templates, but what are some of the new features or new upgrades you've made to the system that maybe other people that have tried it aren't aware of yet? Yeah, uh, I would say the two biggest update, the first one is what you said, customized templates, uh, where we really have, we have a very powerful template engine where you can create your own templates in HippoScribe. So we do way more than soap note. We can do eval, progress note, anything you want. Um, the second biggest feature that we launched recently is called voice edit. Uh, we heard from our user who are always on the phone 
that it's really difficult to kind of edit the notes and type while they're on the go. So we have a new feature where you can just press a button and then tell AI what you want uh, the AI to change the note to. For example, let's say uh, one of the section didn't capture the patient name. So we just say, hey, the patient's name is actually Tony. And then the AI would just go there, intentionally change the patient name to Tony. Um, yeah, I would say that's the that's the second biggest feature we have recently. Yeah, and, and I know some of the ones I noticed, I can turn templates on and off. So there's a toggle button. It, I create a lot of templates. I create condition-specific templates, payer-specific templates. And sometimes if I have an old template that I don't want to delete, but I also don't want it in my drop-down menu, I'll toggle it off so it just doesn't show up. Mm -hmm. um, for viewers watching, you know, my favorite feature of the platform is really the fact that I can go in and create a template based on my existing documentation structure. I love frameworks. And then from that, I can also add elements like a compliance checker. So when I'm writing a Medicare treatment note, I can tell the system, these are the five criteria that Medicare requires for a treatment note. Tell me, give me a score on how well I matched each of these five criteria. And of course, because I'm vain, I tell the AI to, if I have a hundred percent score, tell me something nice and motivating. So I'm more eager to write another note for, for the next treatment. <laughs> um, but anyway, like this is literally something that I don't think I've brought a new technology into my clinic for 15 years. Um, the stuff that was coming out was marginally better than the stuff that they had before. And I just always found that it just didn't work in my kind of busy outpatient orthopedic environment. But now this is something that I think you and I probably have been working together for like two or three weeks. Every single day I use HippoScribe in some capacity, either creating new templates, learning how the system works a little bit better or refining it. In fact, the other day I used it to generate an email summary that I could then take and put into my HIPAA compliant email system to let the patient know what we did during today's treatment, what an amazing job you did, and a little bit of instruction for the HEP. Like that's not an email I ever would have had time to write, but because the AI scribe had access to all the information from that treatment, it could produce a 200 to 300 word email based on everything that I said to the patient. And, and we know you've been a physical therapy patient. I guarantee you forget everything your therapist said five minutes after walking out the door. So having that kind of continuity is huge. Well, listen, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, you have a website, obviously, Facebook group. Tell us a little bit about the best way for people to get in touch with you. Yeah. Um, if you're interested in our product, uh, our website is at gethipposcribe.com, G-E-T-H-I-P-P-O-S-C-R-I-B-E.com. Um, and my email is jensen at gethipposcribe.com. And yeah, uh, there's a Facebook group for people who are interested in using AI to make PD notes a little bit easier. Um, if you search on Facebook, AI Hipposcribe, you should be able to find it. Yep, and I'm in the group and there's a YouTube channel. So I'll post all of those links down in this description of this video. And hopefully I can twist your arm a little bit, get you back on here, and we can start doing some more video recordings, touching on very specific topics, because I know that this is so new for many physical therapists that they're gonna have questions. They're gonna have questions about privacy. They're gonna have questions about utilization, about integration. Does it integrate with different EMRs? And I know that you have tools for all of that. I don't wanna share all that information right now. I'm gonna bring you back for another episode, but as always, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much, Tony. It's such a, it's such a pleasure to speak with you here. Awesome.